In this video, we will continue our discussion about approximating the area under a curve with finite sums, and this time we're going to apply it to a problem involving distance and velocity. So we're going to see, both in this course and in the calculus too, that there are many practical applications of approximating the area of a region using the sum of the area of rectangles. One particular application is, it has to do with distance and velocity. Suppose we have an object which moves along a horizontal axis. Given the object's velocity at time t, which we'll call v, v of t, the object's change in position or displacement from its initial position over a time interval, from t sub k minus 1 to t sub k, is given by that velocity at c sub k, some sample point in that time interval, times the change in time. Now this makes sense because we know that that distance is equal to rate times time. So if we know a rate, namely the velocity at a certain point, and we know the time interval, if we've taken a small piece of time and a, a rate at which it's traveling over that time interval, um, it's reasonable that we get distance. So we can interpret this rate times time, if we think about areas of rectangle, I could say, well, suppose I've got a velocity function, I can use that as my height of my rectangle. The time interval I can use as my width, and I now see that I've got the area of a rectangle involved. So in the example that that we'll see next, we're going to be given a velocity function for an object moving along a horizontal axis over a time interval. We're going to find the displacement of the object over that time interval, and then we're going to find the total distance traveled by the object on that time interval. Our velocity function that we'll use is uh, v of t equals negative 0.5 t cubed plus 5 t squared minus 13.5 t plus 9 which we'll say is in meters per second, and we also have it in a factored form, because sometimes factored form makes it easier to, to do computations. Here's a graph of the curve on the interval from uh, 1 half to 5 seconds. If the area of the rectangle is positive, then we can say that position is gained. If the area of the rectangle is negative, then position is lost. In other words, the object might be backtracking. Suppose that when t is at one half of a second, the object is at position zero meters on the horizontal axis. We're again given the velocity function. Where is the object when t is equal to five seconds? So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to specify the partition on the closed interval from one half to five. We're going to use the partition p equals one half. We're going to mark that here on our, our graph, one half. 1, 1 1.75, 2.5, 3, 3.8, and 5. So those are our partition points which subdivide our interval from 1 half to 5 seconds. Then our sample points, again our sample points are where we determine the height of our rectangles. Now we're, I'm using the word height fairly loosely because we can see here that some of our rectangles um, are going in the negative direction. So um, can a, a rectangle have negative height? Well, in reality, no, but mathematically, if we're thinking of um, a losing a position when we consider height times width, then it, it seems reasonable to discuss about a, a negative area or a negative height. Okay? So our sample points we can see are given by the dotted line. So here's 6 tenths, there's 1.5, 2, and notice, for instance, 2 falls in that second, I'm sorry, that third subinterval. Okay, our fourth sample point falls in the fourth subinterval. So 2.7 is between 2.5 and 3. Our next sample point is 3.4, and our next one is 4.5. And we're using the value of the function or the velocity at those points to give us the heights of those rectangles. So for example, for our first rectangle, 
I've got the height times the width. And our height comes from evaluating the velocity function at our first sample point. Our width comes from our change in t values on that first subinterval. So we're taking the velocity function and we're evaluating it at c sub 1, which is 6 tenths. And we're multiplying it by the width of that first subinterval. So that's 1 minus 1 half. And when I evaluate my velocity function at 6 tenths of a second, I have 2.592, so this would be meters per second, times a duration of 1 half of a second. So when we multiply the units and we multiply those pieces together, I'm going to have a unit of meter. And when I multiply 2.592 times 1 half of a second, I get 1.296 meters. So because this rectangle has positive area, positive height leads to a positive area, we say that from position 0, using our sample point of 6 tenths on the interval from 1 half to 1 second, we gain 1.296 meters. When we continue that for the other rectangles and calculate their areas, again, we're going to see that we have the height times the width for each of these rectangles, where the height is calculated by taking the velocity at our sample point, multiplying it by our width of our subinterval. So I've got the first subinterval, the second subinterval, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth. And now I'm just going to further elaborate on the notation. So chain delta t sub 1 is just t sub 1 minus t sub 0. So delta t sub k is t sub k, the kth term of the partition, minus the previous term. Okay. I'm actually plugging in the values there. So I'm using my sample points. So 0 0.6, 1.5, 2, 2.7, 3.4, 4.5, those correspond to the where we're determining the height of our velocity function. We've plugged in our values for the widths of our subintervals. We calculate that, and we get 2.991525 meters. So in other words, starting at position 0, Using this, these rectangles to approximate the displacement, we get a displacement of 2.991525. So after five seconds, when we started at half a second at position zero, we're approximately, we're almost three meters away. Okay. Now, this calculation of the displacement is different than calculating the total distance. Now, the total distance traveled by the object on this interval is looking at the sum of the absolute value of the velocities times the time interval. Okay? Because here we're taking into account that velocity, uh, that the area is not going to be negative. So when I calculate the absolute value of each of the areas, it's the same calculations except for now we're looking at the absolute value of the terms. So where we had negative values before, we now have positive. And if we were to graph something like this, anything that was the negative portion of the curve would actually come and be positive. So these rectangles would now be above the x-axis. And we would say that the total distance traveled on the interval from 1 half to 5 seconds is approximately 11.05 meters. So that's the total distance traveled because it first traveled this amount and then it traveled that amount only in the positive direction and we just continue to accumulate that distance which we're considering our area. So if we were at up the positive areas of the what's shaded in red we get approximately 11.05 meters.